What are some ways we can build our social media following? Well, let's dive into this. There's some simple, just easy techniques that we can go over first, and then there's kind of some more in-depth, you know, maybe philosophical concepts of what we can do. First thing, be consistent, okay? Post 9, 5 p.m. every day. That's kind of what I do. Maybe a little earlier, maybe a little later. Doesn't really so much matter as long as you're consistent, okay? Um, I find that the best times of engagement are usually between 9 a.m. and 5, and I'm talking about Pacific Standard Time, like wherever your time zone is out there in the world, whatever your time zone is, and not even so much necessarily your time zone, wherever your demographics time zone is. When I say demographics, I mean whoever the majority is of people that follow you. If the majority of people that followed me were, on, were in Japan, then I'd be posting at 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. their time, whenever they go to work and leave work. You know, what are those times? Um, I think it's about variety, you know. Um, it's about, you know, providing a, a body of work that, that kind of shows all the different aspects of what you love and what you love to shoot, but maybe more importantly, like, maybe the things that you feel your strengths are. I find that one of the most crucial things is to be your own person, okay? When I write a caption, you know, as uh, insignificant as this might seem, I, I like to write something that means something to me. I like to write something that feels and, uh, and is significant to me personally, because I want people to know that when they're looking at my page, it's not just some regurgitated, weird, uh, you know, nature page with landscape photos. This is, this is a human being that they're interacting with, okay? Um, making sure that you're engaging with other people. You're commenting back, you're writing back. You know, I mean, uh, for me, anytime that I post something that's like about something I'm promoting, you know, I really like to, to, you know, write comments back. You know, I'm writing back about like this camera, that camera. I'm always, you know, if it's something that's just more poetic and kind of, kind of like, you know, whatever, I'll just, uh, I, I don't write as many comments, but, um, but I like to, um, I like to, definitely respond to people when I know that it's something I'm promoting, whether it's a book or whether it's this or that, I like to really take the time to try and reach back to folks. So making sure you're interacting and also going on people's pages, checking out their stuff. When people direct message me, I almost always answer them, almost every time. Even if it's just thanks for writing me a note, you know, yada, yada, yada. Go onto their page, like an image, whatever, check out their stuff. One of the best things you can do for social media is you can invite people along for the ride. Okay? Social media has broken down the doors of what it means to, like, you get, a, you get a look inside what someone's life is really like, right? So when you have the ability to go somewhere and make people feel like they're along for the ride, because they already are along for the ride, they're already watching your page and looking at your stuff, right? Um, you have the ability to take them on that experience with you, right? So it is it's super important, I think, to, um, to basically have the ability to share content and to, you know, go out and, and uh, invite people along for what you're doing, you know? It's, it's a really great way, I think, to, uh, to kind of just communicate and stuff like that. So that's one of my favorite things. If I'm going somewhere that I know people are going to be excited and stuff, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let them know, hey, I'm going to Iceland next week. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to basically um, invite, you know, invite people along for the ride, come, you know, come check out my photos while I'm here, while I'm there. That's a really, um, it's a really awesome way to do things. This is kind of the beauty of social media, you guys. You become your own brand. You become your own creative director. You become your own editor. You become your own voice because nobody, if you're doing it right, nobody else is there to tell you what you should post or promote because you're the one that's making those calls and you're the one that's accruing this engagement. So who better to speak to it than you? Who knows your demographic better than you? And if you've never met someone that has interacted with you on social media, then you're missing the ball. Because for me, meeting you guys and interacting and engaging and seeing what your interests are and likes are, this is just as important to me because now I can take this information back and say, hey, so-and-so, well, you know, these are the types of people that are interested in my feed, so this is the, types of, this is the type of content I'm, I'm comfortable promoting and selling and the types of trips I'm you know, willing to, to do on social media because I know that they would, they would interact with it, right? So like I said in the very, very beginning of this class, the first five minutes, I said, I'm learning as much from you as you would be from me, and this is why. One thing before I forget too, real estate. It's all about real estate. I know everybody's always like, do you break the square? 
Do you sometimes break the square? Well, I occasionally I do, you know, if I'm posting a video. Um, or occasionally I do if there's a photograph that's super significant to me and I want to show or talk about why, you know, I did that, like this one. You know, I, I broke the square because I, I like the colors in it. Um, why do I usually post in a square? Well, it's their, their platform. You know, it's a square format. I'm just trying to fill the frame with as much color and as much vibrancy as I can. So it also looks extremely clean when you look through someone's feed and you see all this stuff. If you look through someone's feed and you see a bunch of kind of like cropped images here and there and a bunch of advertisements and text like that, then it's not unique. You know, in a couple of weeks or days, I'll probably delete any image that has text on it because these images never get as good of engagement as a photo without text. I, I'm more concerned with creating new images. I'm not concerned with somebody copying my style or, or worried about you know, getting images out there and having them lose their value because I plan to constantly be creating new content. And that's my goal. I want to push myself. Geez, I mean, the more, the more challenges you have in life, the more chances are you're going to have to, to be a better version of you because you are pushing yourself. So that for me, this is a big, a big part of it, is being willing to, um, to get images out there and not be afraid to like keep it all in. You know, this is why, you know, for a lot of folks, this idea of social media, you see a lot of photographers with big watermarks all over it because they're super fearful of this work going out there. Well, they're missing the boat, not the ones who are necessarily getting hired nowadays for a lot of these bigger, awesome projects too because what brands want to see from a social media influencer standpoint is they want to see people that can interact and they work for being an influencer. You have to be able to communicate with people and interact or you're never going to be able to take a piece of this pie, right?